All right, guys, welcome to another cash game review session. Today, we're reviewing Spies Gold and his 50 Zoom session on Pokestars. Guys, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. The cash game strategy videos come every Thursday, and we have other stuff dropping on Sundays. But I hope you enjoy the video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. And let's go, boys and girls. Let's see how we get on. Uh, so insta wrecking anyone not playing a full stack, which I think is okay. Wreck, micro reg, mid reg, crusher, nit, whale, unknown gold. I'm okay with this. What's what's gold? Or just, you know, I, I normally have like regs. I have like bad reg and then aggressive reg. Uh, gold is just you, so that's fine. So I like that you don't have too many labels. We're seeing a lot of other people had labels, like just loads that they didn't use. I like that you've got wreck and whale. I might use the unknown one as an unknown but presumed recreational. For example, someone playing a high VPIP or someone not playing a full stack and then use the rec tag as somebody that you want to play pots with that does something particularly fishy so you know to play pots with red more and then obviously whale is for absolute whale. So, And let's see how we get on. So going for a 2.5x on the button. I like this. This is 50 and L. We get 3 back to a pretty small size. I think we can go either way on the right. So if this was against a full stack, I'm definitely calling because it's not a particularly big three bet. But against a smaller stack, we could possibly fold. Especially, I assume this is three bet. So if this is three bet, then he's got a 2.4% three bet. So he's going to have a really strong hand. So even though this is kind of good because, you know, we get to play pretty easily. As in, you know, we're not, we're not going to lose a lot if we just hit a pair and he starts betting like twice. But at the same time, he's just going to have a stronger range. We're going to have less... We're going to have less equity, effectively. So, yeah. I think we can go either way. I think I'd probably lean towards fold, to be honest. I, I think I would just call when we're deeper against fun players. These hands just definitely go up in value deeper. And without the heart versus a half pot bet, I'm honestly probably folding. Yeah, I like it. It's the bad end to a gutter. Not that we expect him to ever really have, you know, 9-10 or anything. But, you know, it's without a heart. There's, the only card we continue on is a 6. So, I think we have to fold here. 10-8 suited, probably a little bit loose from plus one, but let's have a look at what Bluff the Spot recommends, which is middle position, 10-8 suited. Yeah, so kind of borderline, but I don't mind it, especially if you aren't on particularly aggressive tables. I normally have a flick round and look at the the labels that I've given them or the three bet stats. So if I if they're all like re passive regs or recreationals, or I have a flick and all of the three bet stats are low, I'm much more likely to open, so... So yeah, we're going for the 2.2x in the early positions, 2.5x the later positions, and 3x blind versus blind, which I think is not necessarily optimal, but that's what I use. I think it works really well. The ace-queen we could definitely 3-bet or call. So if we're looking at 3-bet ranges from big blind versus cutoff. So ace-queen, all right, it's primarily calling. I thought this was a pure mix of just 50-50. So we can do either here. I think that even though it's a bigger size, because technically we're getting worse pods, it's actually better to 3-bet. But at the same time, if they're 3-xing with a stronger range, which in theory they should be, then it's not going to work as, as as well. So the ace-jack, I don't mind c-betting. Um, just because what do we do versus this? It's kind of annoying. And the ace-queen, I'm just folding here without a diamond. I think I think this is, this is a mistake. Even though, yes, we have the best hand a lot of the time. So this is what I used to do a lot. We have the best hand a lot, but there's just no cards we can really continue on. And even when we turn good cards like a king where we now pick up a nutted draw, it's still a lot of the time we end up just check calling and end up missing with ace high. So the ace jack on the left, I much prefer it because, you know, we have two overs. There's no flush draw there. For example, here, you know, if we hit the queen of diamonds, it brings in the flush. Obviously, he's got a stronger range than this guy as well because he only flatted in the big blind, so he's definitely capped. This guy still has aces, kings, jacks, deuces, sevens, all the very strong hands. He shouldn't have tens plus. You know, seven should be three betting sometimes anyway. So again, the problem is, is when you take these passive lines, you end up, this is why aggression works so well, because you end up, even though you have the best hand, when you're not, when you don't have the initiative, you don't get to realize your equity because they can push you off your equity. So that's why I'd prefer betting rather than check calling. It seems counterintuitive because if we bet on the left hand table, then we're not really going to get called by a worse hand. Whereas if we check, we allow them to bluff, but it's just a case of not getting to realize our equity. So... And obviously we drill top pair on the river. And I think you can go either way here. I don't mind checking just because, you know, he's going to have some ace -axe. If he's bluffing, he's going to he's gonna want to bluff that. I think I go for a smaller size in just because we're trying to target 10 x and it's a really bad card for him. In the same breath, we're probably going to bluff this river. But honestly, what bluffs do we have that check calls the flop, check check on the turn, and then bats the river? 
Are we going to have King Queen? Maybe, but we're more likely to bet that because we have less showdown. You know, any straight draw on the flop is going to have a pair or a straight at this point. So I think I, if I'm going to bet, which I think is fine, I think we go a bit of a smaller size in or just check and allow him to bluff and just, you know, just be check calling. Three and a half X versus early position. I'm definitely defending King nine. It wouldn't surprise me if this is closer than it seems given high rake and the pretty ridiculous size. I still think we have enough playability to continue here. I am just definitely overfolding a lot in the big blind versus bigger sizes. You know, I'm going to be folding hands like Jack 10, 9, 10 off where I'd usually be defending. But I think King-9 suited just has, you know, more than enough playability. Especially when you flop top two pair. That's that's uh, pretty good. And honestly, versus a rack, I think we can go either way here. I prefer just raising on these boards. Even though we block a lot of the hands we want him to continue with, I'd rather just get as much money in now while we still have a nutted hand. It doesn't look like there are, but there are a lot of bad turn cards. A 10, a jack, an ace a queen all of those are pretty bad so i think that we just want to raise here in general against fun players we don't really have to be as balanced or even balanced at all because this isn't a thing raising three and a half x is pretty bad in general unless we're raising super tight and i just wouldn't recommend it and betting pot on this flop is it's not that bad actually because it's a really good board for him but i still think this is obviously going to be a recreational player so i think i prefer raising here and also if he has a hand like aces as well and this turn card comes then we're just going to find it really hard to get value now we obviously we just call because we lock up the board so hard if he does have a value hand at this point he's just going to be jamming river anyway so if he's got ace king or something he's going to be jamming river anyway any bet that he's making you know with a nine or like pocket tens he might not call to a raise so i think we just want to call here there is argument to be jamming. You know, maybe he's got a hand like ace, ten of diamonds and he'll just put it in anyway. And this could be an amazing river as well because now he's probably not going to bet his queen jacks, but he, he does have jack ten as bluffs. So be interesting to see, see what he had there. Uh, ace deuce off. Well, you played it like an absolute G. And that's something to note as well that I would just note. Um, and again, when, when, we, when, we, when, we, when we make notes on players, we don't want to be, you know, putting a story. You know, just write a note saying just double... Pot, pot, nonsense. Like three and a half X, days deuce off, pot, pot, nothing. And then that way you're going to know against him that he's going to bet pot with absolute air. So we can call down with these strong hands. Whereas against somebody that's going to bet, you know, only their strong hands, we're going to want to raise. So ace queen here on the right hand side, we have an option for both. We generally are always V pipping versus a three bet. So it's just going to be whether we want to call or four bet. And I think we can just mix. So four bet would be as a bluff, so we'd be four bet folding here. And I don't mind it in position if you think that the villain's going to three bet a reasonable amount. I would imagine at these stakes that he's probably not going to three bet and then five bet bluff. You know, something like ace five suited. So I think this is pretty good to four bet bluff sometimes. And we don't have to go big here, we can just make it 23 big blinds. But as long as we're continuing in general, if you know you're against a very tight player, I, I, I definitely consider folding. But generally speaking, we do want to continue this hand. And I'm fine with the call. This is one of the few offsuit kind of hands that we're going to be calling here. Maybe a little bit of king queen, but again, that works as a four bet. And obviously pairs, but you know, they, they're a pair. So this is probably one of the few offsuit, you know, offsuit hands that we're going to continue with. We get a seven deuce four flop. Amazing board for him in that he has all of the overpairs. We have a set advantage in that he shouldn't be three betting deuces or fours or not a high frequency. So yeah, I wouldn't mind continuing this to a smaller bet. In fact, I think it would be pretty much paramount to continue because he should be see betting this board a lot. In fact, we can probably call this because from a theory point of view, we should be betting large on this board because he has big advantage. So we can still be betting his, his 10 jack suited, his queen jack suited, king 10. All of those hands. We still have two overs against some of his pairs. Eights through two jacks. But obviously we've got reverse implied odds on an ace against a hand like ace king. But I do think we can continue. I think if we had ace queen of clubs, ace queen of diamonds, ace queen of hearts. We have a mandatory call. Which is why calling with these suited combinations is so much better. Because we have, you know, just easier calls on the flop. Because we can pick up cards on the turn which give us equity. Which we can continue the turn with. So I I'm okay with folding. If you're about smaller I think we'd have to continue. But against half pot or more, even though he should, he can be betting big on those those kind of boards. I still think ace queen we can we can fold there. King queen suited is just going to be a pure call versus three bet here. We have a good hand in position. We just want to see flops with it. We don't want to turn this into a four bet bluff because we don't want to four bet and get five bet jammed on. We get an interesting board. So these are you know the kind of middling boards where I think versus a third pot we just have to continue here. 
We still have two overs. We have the backdoor flush draw. We've got backdoor straight draws. We have to continue here. I wouldn't hate this as a raise if you think he's getting out of his line with the C-bets. But fun players, I've noticed some fun players will have a ridiculously high C-bet. As high as like 90%. And they will just slam any board for one third with their entire range. And then against those guys, we can start to, you know, bluff raise a bit more because there's some good um, good turns. I'd have C-bet definitely as a start. Even if you don't use, you know, post-lop starts all that much, I have C-bet, fold to C-bet, check raise, turn C-bet, turn, fold to C-bet, fold to turn C-bet, and turn raise. Even if you don't use the turn ones and that all that often, just having a C-bet one is just really good to know because it just allows you to float wider or raise wider. For example, if you've got a thousand hands on somebody and their C-bet is zero, we're going to want to check back. The reason being, if they don't bet this kind of board, they're going to have a lot of check raises and they're going to have a lot of strong hands. If they bet 100% of the time, it means that, that not only they're going to see back their strong hands, they're just going to see back all of their air and they're going to have a reasonable amount of air. So I would, um, I would I'd definitely recommend having it. So we float, which I think is absolutely fine. And then we turn an open ender. Not loving the sizing, but we have nutted outs now. And I think we just have to call. It kind of sucks, but I don't think we want to be folding here. Raising's okay, but it's, I, I'm not really a fan of it. This kind of sucks, but I, I do think we have to call. There's still some rivers that we can bluff on, although, you know, I'm not enjoying the fact that 10 is a club because we're going to be in awkward spots on club rivers, whether we hit or whether he checks and we have the opportunity to bluff. He, he should still have bluffs, though. I know we blocked some of them, but he can still have, let's say, ace-8 of clubs. He can have hands like ace-queen. He can have king-queen himself. And the good thing about if he has king-queen himself that isn't of clubs, we should effectively win or chop every time. Unless he, you know, jams a brick river, which I don't think he's going to do all that often. I don't think enough enough players do it. So I do think even though it's a big size and, you know, we end up with a SPR of just one by the river that we do want to be calling here. Queens on this board. I think this is a good board to go for a big size. I like it. On lower boards versus big blind, we need to be careful. But I think this one is still one we have huge advantage on. So I like the big size in. I think you can go either way in this turn. I think I like checking when we have a heart and betting a lot when we don't have a heart. The A3 suited, I wouldn't hate a squeeze here. I've noticed a lot of 3Xing, so I don't think the size is much of a tell, so I wouldn't mind squeezing. And we want to go to somewhere around 14. Yeah, I think this is okay. Maybe, yeah, no, I think this is fine versus a 3X on a call. Yeah, I like it. Nice squeeze. And villain calls twice. I think we just have a pretty clear check back on the river, and that's pretty good. This is the thing why betting works well. Like, at the stakes I play, if I'm against a reg and they call the flop, they're going to actually check raise a lot with that hand. On the turn, there is no way they are check calling that turn with ace nine with the ace of with the ace of hearts, and I assume that you're going to be bet folding here because he just has a lot of flushes, um, and straights and sets and all kind of random shit. So I don't mind the bet at these stakes and lower, especially especially at twenty five and L or lower, because you know we had a spot with Chris where it was very similar in that bet the turn and the guy had 9-10 on the flop with the out of position float, then the guy turned an open ender and just check called and ended up with his dick in his hand with 10 high. And that's what this guy's basically done with ace high. And, you know, if he plays that differently, he can maybe not get you to fold queens. But no, he could get you to fold queens a lot of the time, especially if he's, you know, not playing super aggressively. Eights here, we have one of these fun spots. Nobody likes getting three bet and being out of position here. His sizing is pretty big as well. Doesn't seem that aggressive from his stats, but I think we have have to continue here. And honestly, if you let go of sixes, fives and below, and maybe even sevens here, I wouldn't I wouldn't be that bothered about it. Because it's a large three bet. But I think eights we we do have to continue. I wouldn't be four bet and I'd just be calling. Easy squeeze here with the kings. And I think we want to go somewhere in the region of I might go one bigger here, 13 and a half. But again, anything between 12 and let's say 16 is okay. I'd prefer maybe 13 and a half, something like that. So he checks back with the pocket eights. I think we want to bet this turn. He He's still going to call all of his ace kings, ace queens, stuff like that. It does worry me sometimes when they don't bet these flops um, and then raise his turn. Honestly, I'm just easily folding this. It's not even close for me. Just, can you imagine somebody doing this as a bluff? I think it would really be a good bluff from too much bluff if he did this because it just, even though it, his line doesn't make sense, like, there's no way he's bluffing there, surely. We can have 7x as well, by the way. We still have 7-8 suited, all the combos. 6-7 uh, suited, bit more on the loose side against the larger 3-bet. Yeah, I guess he does have massive advantage. 
But we can still have against a live streamer. We can still have hands like Jack, so we just continue and just hope he doesn't have it. It's just easier. Just you know, those spots overall when you get three bat, you know, versus button, quarter versus button, and then they start. Then it comes to seven high board, and then they raise. It's not going to happen all that often. It doesn't really matter. Honestly, I don't know what to do in these spots multi way. I think checking is fine. Uh, the problem is here. No, don't bet big. Whatever you do, betting big is trash. We shouldn't bet big on it this board with anything. So the thing is with a board like this is if you're playing against people that have correct ranges, they shouldn't have many offsuit combos on the flop with the exception of pairs, right? So we don't actually have to protect from as much as you might think. Maybe three way we have to protect more, but let's say we're heads up, you know, he shouldn't have a hand like king queen offsuit or king jack offsuit or even ace jack offsuit, maybe ace queen, but that should be four bay. So we don't have much to protect from. So we can check these flops more often than you think because we don't have to, you know, protect from, let's say, ace 10 with the 10 of spades because that's not going to be in the range. Now, if you're thinking of, oh, well, what if they have sevens with the seven of spades? They're not going to fold that flop anyway most of the time, right? So we don't need to protect. So it's not like betting all of a sudden gets all these junk spades to fold. So let's say we were, you know, we were under the gun versus big blind and the big blind defends. There's more reason to bet there because he could have a hand, say, let's say, ace three with the three of spades, and he still has reasonable equity against our hand because it's a, you know, it's a single raise pot, but it's a hand he should definitely be folding to a C bet. So I don't hate the check on the flop. What I do hate is this turn. What is this turn bet trying to achieve? This is like a desperation bet. This is definitely a mistake. The idea of betting here with a hand like Kings, we should bet for one reason only or we, we should bet for one reason primarily and the other reasons why we're betting should be a benefit the reason we should be betting kings on this turn is anyone value we should be betting for value if we protect our hand in the process that's that's a benefit you know we are going to want some protection but most of the time on this kind of board it's just value for example pocket nines isn't folding we don't protect our hand from pocket nines or even a7 suited we get value from those hands so the reason we want to be betting here is for value when you start blasting this amount in three way, it's going to be difficult to get value. That is a ridiculous bet size, especially they still both have flushes. They can definitely have some maybe pocket eights, although it's unlikely. Pocket fives, definitely a possibility. More often than that, it's the fact that let's say, let's say this guy is pocket tens, he's probably going to bet that flop, whereas a seven of spades may check that flop. So they still have flushes and really strong hands. So and now what do you do? This has just got to be a fold, I think. I can't imagine he's bluffing. Yeah. Like, and look at that. You've got one out, man. You've got one out. Uh, also, he's trash. Tag him as a fish because what's he doing calling fives? Go on, drill it. Oh, okay. So, again, on the flop, he's probably not... He should fold on the flop, but he's not going to fold on the flop because he's called pre-flop. And he shouldn't have called pre-flop because he's got one player left to act. So, I don't hate it. This bet on the turn is, honestly, it's terrible. I understand why you're doing it, but then snap calling as well. Riddle me this, Spice Gold. What do you think? Like, when you snap call, what do you expect him to have that you beat here? He's not just playing, a hundred, like, 90 however many big blinds deep, 91 big blinds deep. He's playing 162 big blinds deep against this guy. This guy can still, in theory, have nut flushes. What do you expect to, him to have? And, you know, if you think he's got, like, ace-10 with the ace of spades, you're telling me that's going to check back the flop just to bluff the turn? Absolute punt here. You're telling me pocket queens in this spot, right? So when we squeeze, you're telling me pocket queens is just going to flat call instead of four betting. And then he's going to check back this flop. I think the flop can be a check or a bet. I think either is fine. And we want to pick a small size on this board with our entire range. Because there are hands we don't want to bet big, such as pocket kings. There are also hands, you know, that we do want to bet big, but we can't just bet big with our strong hands and bet small with our weak hands or marginal hands. So, you know, ace, ten of spades, we want to bet big. We want to get as much money in, in, in as we can in. But we can't just do that. So I think we can go either way on the flop, but we should be picking small bets if we're betting. But honest to God, this if you're going for this turn size, because you're thinking it's some sort of like exploit and people are going to call super wide, I, I could understand it. But once he shoves there, we just got to fold. Ace, king with the ace of spades. Guys, what, what, what do you think happens when he has ace, king or queens with the ace of spades? Why are you trying to make up hands that these players are having? 
He doesn't have ace king with the ace of spades because he should be four betting. If he doesn't four bet, he's going to bet this flop a lot. If he doesn't bet this flop a lot, he's probably passive, right? If somebody flats queen's preflop, then checks back an eight high board, on the turn, they're probably not doing a lot of raising. They're going to play passive because they're a passive player. If somebody has ace king with the ace of spades and they don't four bet and they see this flop three way and they check back and then they see this size bet on the turn, no way in hell are they shoving. And even if he does have that, it's not many combos because we have two kings. Yeah, definitely a, definitely a huge overplay with this king's hand. 9-10 here, much prefer it with the club, but I still think we want to see bet again. So I see you raising a lot blind versus blind, but then being very passive post-slot, which I think is a problem. So here we have no showdown, but we have equity in the hand. I don't really like check calling this hand. I definitely don't like check raising this hand, which leaves me one option, which is to bet. So I definitely see think we want to bet the flop here. Or the turn. This is way too passive now. Way too passive. Once he checks flop, we have to bet the turn, I think. If you're this passive, you can't be raising with 9 10, flopping gut shots, then just check folding. You, you, like, you actually can't be doing that. That That is that is definitely an error. Ace green here, blind versus blind, we'd have a 3 bet to BVB. Uh, versus 2.5x, I don't mind going the size, so they should be making it a little bit bigger, i.e. like 3x. I'd be going 9 versus a 3x. Here, I think this is fine. I might go 8 big blinds anyway, put a bit more pressure on him while we're in position. A side board on the left, I think we can do anything. I generally go for a smallish size. There's a lot you can connect with. We obviously have a big advantage. I wouldn't hate going big on this board. Half pot seems okay to me. Um, we could also check as well. I think I, I, anything is fine. And I like going for a small bet here on this 669. I think with pretty much range. I think we can just bet range here. We have, we have a lot of 6x as well. If anything, we probably have more 6x than him. Let's actually have a look. So big blind versus small blind with three bet and like king six suited, some king six off. But he doesn't have any of these hands. You know, the 6-7 suited, 5-6 suited, 8-6 uh, eight, eight, suited. We have all of those. He might not have all of those anyway. So if anything, we actually have more 6-6x six, six than he does. Uh, the left-hand side, I like the check. And I think we want to go for a big bet on the river. I think that's fine. I, I probably wouldn't go pot size. I'd probably go smaller. Because I, if I bluff on this river, I'm going to want to bluff a little bit smaller. I might go three-quarters pot, or maybe half pot, something like that. But I think betting is okay. It's very unlikely he's going to have a queen axe. We're trying to target worse ace axe here. The problem is with this bet size, we are trying to target specifically, you know, ace axe. Whereas if we bet smaller, we can potentially get called from nine axe as well. Queen on the turn is interesting. I feel as though you might go for a check for similar reasons, but I'm, I'm very much okay just blasting here. The problem is against a lot of opponents, you might not be able to get enough value from this bet on the turn. For example, jacks and tens are probably should be four betting pretty a lot. So it's only like 9x and 8s and 7s and a lot of those can fold. So for that reason, I don't hate checking. If we get raised here, we're in a very nasty spot. Yeah, in fact, we have to go with it if we get raised because he should have just a shitload of bluffs. He can have like 10 jack of clubs, 10 8 of clubs, 7 8 of clubs, ace 8 of clubs, stuff like that. Perfect river though. I'm just over about jamming here. I don't know if we jam or, or call. The thing is, we're really not beat by much. A very random 6x. Only three combos are pocket nines. Queens is pretty much, there's only one combo and it's so unlikely anyway. I wouldn't hate calling for a couple of reasons though. And it's going to sound daft one of the reasons why I'm calling. Because he's kind of polar here. I think that he should have queen X or better. Or he's going to have a bluff. So for that reason, I think we just call. Because firstly, he's not really going to call with a worse hand. Well, secondly, we can be beat. And thirdly, I'd like to know what he bluffs with if he bluffs. Because I'd like to know what, it, what he if this is a bluff and specifically what hands he gets to the river with. So yeah, I think we want to call her. When we lose, we're going to see nines. I still think he has like queen jack of... No, we can't have queen jack of spades. Queen jack of diamonds, maybe? Fuck knows what he's got. King queen off. What a, what a shit river that was. Also, his donk's absolutely trash as well. Um, his, his donk lead might get paid by jacks. And then we have pocket nines. We have queen x, which chops. We have aces. We have kings. The, the the point of like check calling the turn here with king queen is so that you are going to bluff worse hands so let's say i had a hand like if i had seven eight suited here i'm probably just going with it in fact no if i have 10 jack suited i'm going with it because if i have 10 jack of let's say i have 10 jack of spades i would block tens i would block jacks i would block queen jack of spades and queen ten of spades and I would be very low down in my range with ten with jack high. So if I have jack 10 of spades here, I am taking this exact same line and jamming, not assuming he checks. So if I have 10 jack of spades and he donks this with king queen, congratulations, you just got me to fold jack high. Like, well done. Kings, let's go. Four bet, get it in. Sort me off, June. Don't have aces, please. 
A little bit big here for in position, 24 and a half versus a nine. I think we want to go 23 at most. I'd be going 22 here because we want to have bluffs and this is a chunky bluff. However, at these stakes, I guess you want to put more money in. Probably against aces, by the way. I always say that people don't tend to three bet from the big blind versus positions earlier than the button, i.e. under the gun, middle position and cutter. Um, so I think this is just going to be queens, kings, aces and ace king. I can't imagine we see a hand other than those. So obviously we're still getting it in. There's more combos of ace, king, and queens than there are of aces. But I'm not even like loving life in these spots, especially at these stakes. What you have nine five off? Oh jacks, okay. Standard in theory, but I think if you're doing this in the general pools, actually this is fifty, isn't it? Not twenty five. So I don't think it's that bad. Ah oh, fuck off. <laughs> so the ace jack and the ace four both pretty marginal here. I like that we're going for a bluff with the ace four suited. I think this works particularly well against weaker regs. So definite regs, but weaker ones. I think this is a perfect three bet. Um, Want to go maybe, yeah, 10 big blinds, I think is I think is a good size, big blind versus cutoff. So the reason I think this works really well is that, like I said, people don't three bet a lot from the big blind versus the positions earlier than the button. So I think that we should have more bluffs because people just assume from an exploitative point of view that we're not three betting that wide, which we're not, so... Okay, we flop mid bottom pair. What I like to do on this kind of board is kind of neutral-ish. We both should have nines and tens. He probably has fours that we don't. Maybe we don't have nines all that often. We're more likely to call. We both have some queen-jack suited, you know, some, some strong draws, maybe king-queen suited, stuff like that. So it's kind of a neutral board. I think when I bet here, I want to go for something like half pot. I'm not sure what a size of solver would use, but it's kind of a neutral board. I don't mind doing some checking on this board, sometimes with aces, sometimes with hands like pocket tens. I generally like to bet my hands like ace four for two reasons. So first of all, we want to protect our hand. It's bottom pair, like, you know, there's a lot of overcards to it. But we also have good um, fold equity or bluff equity against some better hands. So five, sixes, sevens should be folding, you know. But I think checking is fine. We also have the backdoor flush draw. The problem is we don't really want to face a bet here because we should be continuing. So I, for that reason, I don't mind betting this hand and, you know, checking some hands like eights or, you know, a nine, stuff like that. Ace nine suited. I think either's fine. And then again, we have one of these interesting spots where people's instant reaction here is to bet. Whereas now we're at the turn here, I'm very, I'm much more likely to check. I am going to check here a lot because we have showdown. We don't really need to bluff now. So... He checks back the turn, and he can definitely have hands like sixes, sevens, eights, right? When he checks back this flop, he's trying to get to later streets so that he can put in less money and the SPR still be smaller and try to get to showdown. So he'll be trying to get to showdown with these hands. Betting ace four here doesn't really achieve much. All we really do is protect our hand. We had a similar spot with, was it gamer win or was it gravy? Gamer win, was it you when you had the ace five of spades and you had bottom pair on a flush draw and then bat and then you got jammed on and you felt like a knob? In any case, I just don't think we need to bet now. Absolute gin river. I think we can go either way with this exact hand. This is a really interesting one. So, in one aspect, it's a card we're going to bluff a lot. Having ace four of diamonds is actually not a good combo. Because I'd rather really not have the ace of diamonds. Because the only ace x he can have is ace queen maybe. And then, then better aces. As in ace five suited, ace nine suited, ace ten suited. So, not that I'm too bothered about value owning ourselves, by the way. But his strongest hand's really going to be 10x here. So, if we didn't have ace four of diamonds, I actually probably... Pro if we had ace four of spades for whatever reason, I don't mind going for a big bet here because we unblock ace x of diamonds. Here, I don't hate going for a check. There are still a lot of hands that he could bet, that he could bluff here. He can still have nothings like six, seven suited. He could have jack queen suited. He could have king queen of diamonds. I actually kind of like this check because also we're going to want to check some hands like kings here. So we want to be balanced and check some strong hands. And I think this actually works pretty well as a check. I don't think we want to go too big because again, what we're trying to target. Yes, we do want to balance when we're bluffing, but I think we can just go three quarters part here. Okay, we got called. Uh, I guess king ten, king 10 of spades. Fucking hell, man. Just in what world? Jesus. These guys make me look like absolute bellends here. 
Every time, I, I'm like, oh, I think we should maybe check because we can't get called by something. Fucking calls with literally the worst hand you can ever have. It's so retarded, that call, by the way. No, there's, there's just... No, just no. He's pissed me off. Let's see the positives for calling deuces here. He unblocks hands like queen, jack, king, queen. And he unblocks flush draws. He doesn't have a diamond. The bad part about it, he has the worst fucking pair he could ever have. If he's calling deuces... He's calling every single hand. When we, If we're going to hero call on the river, we have to think about how low down we are in our range. We don't need to call when we're at the bottom of our range. If we're calling deuces because it's got good unblocking properties, which he's not, he's also calling threes, sixes, sevens, eights. They all have similar unblocking properties. Absolute goon. Tag him is a ridiculous station. Jack's here, we are just pure calling. I even think from a theory point of view, we're pure calling. So if you look at the ranges here, so... 3-bet from the blinds, it's actually pure calling jacks, 10s, primarily calling queens here, only 4-bet in a little bit. The reason why is that we're in position and we are, we're basically, we have a lot of hands we want to call with in position here, so we want to have some strong hands. We want to have, make sure we have coverage on all kinds of boards. But also the EV of 4-bet is not going to be that high as well because they should be, they're only going to be 3-bet you know, a bit tighter. I actually really like this flop, in a way. It slows him down with aces and queens and we block king jack suited completely which is a hand that should be pure three betting. So this is an amazing board uh, for jacks, really, other than, you know, just drilling a jack. I'm always calling twice here and then deciding on river based on opponent calling down, to be honest, against a lot of opponents. I think we need to call this turn. Okay, so if you're against a very tight player, I think that we should be, I think, I think we can be folding, but these kind of boards, they are just very good to double barrel. The thing is as well, is in terms of triple barreling for value, I don't think he can triple barrel that much for value. For example, queens or aces just gets a bit thin here. Maybe if you have specifically queen of spades, queen of clubs, because then we block king queen entirely, so there's less king x. It's still like a little bit thin, so you generally would never see somebody triple barrel this for value without a king or better. So I think, and because this board's so good for him, you know, if he has ace queen of spades, for example, you can just double that because you block ace king of spades, which is a hand we're going to call, and we block king queen of spades, so there's very few king x hands that we're going to have. So I think we have to call it. Again, maybe at lower stakes, it's going to be burning money a bit, but we can't just end up at the river with only very strong king x, because otherwise we're just going to get bluffed off too much. Just from these stats, he does seem pretty raggy. 10% 3 bet, 27, 13, 10. Like, that doesn't seem bad. That actually seems pretty reggy, playing a full stack. 3-bet into 12 big blinds. Probably seems like a reg, meaning he's going to double barrel bluff a lot. And honestly, most regs don't triple. So this is a thing, I think people are worried about calling the turn a lot because they're just like, ah, oh, shit, I'm just going to get, you know, I'm going to have to call a turn and, you know, what am I going to do on the river? They don't want to be put in that spot. But honestly, you're not going to get put in that spot enough, I don't think. So I think we should definitely call the turn, especially when we have this specific combo as well. You know, if you have the other combo and we block some flush draws and such, if we had queen jack, if we had jacks with the jack of diamonds and the jack of hearts, I could get behind a fold a bit more. I know, you know, it, it seems like very thin margins, but it's what poker is these days. But completely unblocking king jack suited here, he can only have king queen and ace king. A lot of the times with aces, he's going to want to check the turn because then he can allow us to bluff our flush draws. He can, you know, we can bluff our hands like let's say he has aces without a diamond, we can bluff our ace-jack of diamonds or 10-jack of diamonds, which we can call on the flop. So yeah, I think that's a bit nitty on the turn. <laughs> well, we flop Jinskis here. Okie dokie. The ace-queen, I think I want to go, if we go for a c-bet, I think we want to go small here and I like betting one-third with my entire range. Literally my entire range. So ace-queen is going to be a bet. 8, 9, 10 here. I think we do want to pick large sizings when we do bet, but we want to be checking quite a lot. I wouldn't hate checking this hand against a reg so that we have some nuts when we check back because this is a pretty good board for villain. And we get check min raised, put more money in. But against a fun player here, let's fast play. Fast play. Like it. So now you can make the argument of what bluffs do we have here and the answer is none, but we can have some. We could have here ace jack of... Uh, clubs, ace queen of clubs and king queen of clubs would be our best bluffs here. And I think that we can three bet them in because we have so much equity against everything. Yeah, I think ace, ace queen of clubs is one of our best ones because then we even unblock jack x so we could still have like 10 jack, jack nine, stuff like that. So yeah, just put more money in here. Um, we want to, the idea here is against a fun player, 
when we have the nuts, we want to put as much money in as we can before the board gets rubbish. Let's say he has jack seven here and the turn comes a 10 and the river comes a 10 or the turn comes a nine, the river comes an eight or the turn comes a club, the river comes a club, even just one club. It's going to devalue our hand so much. This is such a wet board where there's so much room to continue with. He can have all the sets because he's called out the small blind. He could have hands like jack nine of clubs. He could have hands like ace nine of clubs. He could have hands like six, seven suited. Put as much money in as you can. And obviously we don't want to go too big. Like, I think this is fine. We want to keep his, his hands in. And we don't want to get min clicked here because when he min clicks, he has queen jack suited as well. Or queen jack off. And he could have queen jack with a club. He calls and we drill the super nuts. Okay, I don't mind checking on this turn because we want to be balanced. But I guess I prefer checking when we have jack X of clubs. Yeah, I don't mind checking this turner. Okay. There's argument for just calling here. So even though I'd say put the money in in case he has a flush draw, against some absolute whales, they might just completely punt off here. Like he shouldn't really be doing this with the jack because it's terrible because it's just going to fold out so many of our hands. But at the same time, if he does have a flush draw, he's going to call it off on the on the turn anyway. And we might as well just get that money in because we might not get it when it bricks. So, and we, and we, no matter what the river comes, we get stacked. If if he has a flush draw and it gets there, we get stacked. If he has a, a boat or two pair and it pairs up, we get stacked. So I, I would just put it in here. I, I would just put it in. I think either's fine. If you know the guy's a sick whale and he has, do you remember there was a hand that we reviewed last time and it was so ridiculous that we had a flush and the guy just had nine five and nine high and just went off on one. If you know he's capable of that absolute wild nonsense, then calling is the only option. If he's, if you think he's just always going to have either a jack or some equity, put it in. So yeah, I think putting it in here makes the most sense. And he's got jack nine of clubs, and we can't hold. You just, you just gave me this one because you, you just wanted to show off your bad beats, didn't you, Spice Gold? No one cares about your bad beats. We care about how you play, and you played that fine. The thing is, when you flop the nuts, it's generally very easy to play. Like, if I was against a reg, I may consider just calling the flop. But at the same time, I'm going to be very balanced in the way that I'm going to have a lot of bluffs on this flop. Um, so when I have Queen Jack, I want to be putting more money in. Because I'm just going to have, like, very high equity bluffs. Ace Jack of uh, clubs, especially. And then, you know, Ace Queen of clubs, King Queen of clubs. The occasional Ace Nine of clubs, stuff like that. And obviously, Tens as well. Like, Tens is a good hand to 3-bet because if they have, like, 8s or 9s, they're going to get it in. And they have one out, and we still have equity against the straight anyway, so. Uh, anyway, well played. Unlucky. King 6 suited. I wouldn't hate going for a 4-bet here. Blind versus blind. It's a reasonable hand to 4-bet. Bluff. It's not really strong enough to call. So when you pick your 4-bet bluffs, you can pick them kind of intuitively. In the way that when you find a hand that's like, you're like, ah, I kind of want to call, but it's not good enough. But I also don't want to fold. You can kind of put them in the, you know what, fuck you on 4-bet and range. So I wouldn't hate to see a 4-bet with the King-6 suited. Again, only against people you know that are going to 3-bet and are willing to fall to 4-bet. This, this flop on the left, again, we've seen this passiveness, uh, blind versus blind. I think we can see about this hand. Um, I think we could check-raise it as well, but this is a board that's really good for our range, and there's a billion turns we can continue on. So we can see about the flop. We can bet on any diamond, a 7, a 5, a 10... All of these give us gut shots and flush draws. We could even bet a jack to try and get some uh, 9x hands to fold or 6x hands, you know, and then barrel on a diamond representing a flush. We've not seen a lot of you actually bluffing. So I think, you know, the way you play value-wise is okay. I think I'd, it's weird that you check this hand, but then bet this hand. This makes more hand. This makes more sense as a check call because we don't want to get raised. Whereas this, you know, makes more as a bet because we can set up bluffs and, you know, we, we're effectively bluffing. Like, here is just a bit of a weird one. I think folding here is okay. Had we had the queen of hearts instead of the eight of hearts, I'd be calling with the backdoor flush draw. And again, we just see this passiveness where it just means, let's say he bets the turn with everything on the turn. It means we lose 100% of the time when we check check flop and check turn. So we have 0% equity. Or we have 0% EV when we could have, like, 70% equity. So, for example, Jack 5 suited, even though it's an open blind versus blind, if you think that say villains three bet in a reasonable amount and you are losing a lot blind versus blind, which I think you are. We can consider we can consider um just opening less wide. Right, this is interesting. Yeah, I think we just call here and drill a flush. And I think we can do either or here. I think a lot on this flop he's going to be weighted towards bluffs. 
There's not really that much for value. King nine, maybe pocket four. Some of these are going to bet on the turn. He checks the turn pretty quickly. I think if we bet, I don't mind going for a smaller size. Trying to target is just nine X, is king X, is queen tens, stuff like that. I don't, uh, I think we can do everything. We have a flush. We can bet small, we could bet big. I guess he's just got king nine. Oh my God, what, what are these guys doing to me? They're making me look like an absolute fucking goon on stream you know i'd say don't bet that size like again tag him as an absolute good i might just start playing 50 zoom because honestly the, the are the pools always like this because i've seen some wild call downs like that is absolutely terrible and that's something you should note as well that he raises that hand what does he expect you to have on the river everything gets there oh, if he's got a flush draw he gets there if he's got queen jack he's got a pair if he's got 10 jack he's got straight What's he putting you on? Jack's under the gun, standard open. I like in the sizes. These are the exact sizes I use. 2.2x in the early positions, 2.5x later, 3x BVB. I like going for a big um, big size on this board in general because we have advantage. But if we're going to mix between big bets and small bets, this hand is really good for a big bet. We unblock some 10x, we, uh, we unblock the top pair, we unblock the flush draw, and our hand needs a lot of protection. When we have aces with the ace of spades, there's a lot few worse cards. When we have jacks without a spade, you know, a queen, jack, a queen, king, or ace, or a spade is a pretty bad card. So we want to put more money in here when we have, you know, a really strong hand. Uh, versus a raise, this kind of sucks. This could be very nutted. He doesn't seem like he gets out of line. But there's a lot of draws, aren't there? With the jack, so we need to continue. I think just calling, like, three betting doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, easy call on the turn here. He can still, in theory, have worse for value, such as ace-10. The four's better for him. He has hands like ace-3 suited, maybe a loose 3-6 of spades, 3-6 of hearts, but we definitely have to call the turn. And the river bricks, and he's just going to overbet jam, and we're going to be in a spot, aren't we? Don't do it. Don't do it, Dodenberg. Sweet, check. I think we have to bet this for value. He's very unlikely he has a better hand. Two flush draws missed, and he still has a lot of 10 act. I think we want to bat, and we want to go large here. Yeah, I, I like this kind of sizing, 75% pot. I think one of two things happens here. I, it's very unlikely he's going to check raise, even though check raising is viable. I think one of two things is going to happen. He's going to snap call with ace-10, and he's going to snap fold with a bluff. Show me ace-10. Ding, 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 ding. Our survey says. <laughs> I'm so good at this game, chat. I'm so good at this game. But I want to see what you do with this queen 10 before we talk about it. Corner seems pretty standard. It's a bit of a large three bet, but he's got quite a low three bet. We'll, we'll check the ranges after this hand. We'll see what it's saying. Flop, I think we only have one option here. Um, Folding's obviously out of the question. Raising is just too thin. Doesn't really achieve much. Turn is interesting. It's kind of good in a way that we just have an easy continue on the turn. It's bad because he has a lot of king X. So he's likely to bet this with a lot of his range. If he has a hand like ace jack or ace 10, he should be betting here as a bluff because he can get us to fold some hands. I like the fact he's checked. So I think we just have a relatively clear check here. My guess is, okay. My guess is that you were going to bet because you didn't want to face a river barrel. So there's not actually that many bad rivers. This is one of the worst rivers. In saying that, though, it's probably not as bad as it looks because he doesn't really change all that much. Ace-Jack and Ace-10 should be betting. So I think that only really the hands that improve are going to be hands like Ace-5 of spades. We don't really want to bet our hand on the turn just for protection or to get out of a spot on the river. So I think checking back this makes the most sense. There's argument for maybe a small bet because he's still going to have maybe 9s, 10s and Jacks. But I think checking is fine. And I think we just have to... Ooh. Okay. Do it. I'd fucking love this. Would I love it? I think I'd love it. Let's see. I, I don't know because he just has aces and kings as well. Like, what's he actually going to bet fold? Click it. Do it. Let's see. Bet he snaps with aces. Snap fold. This is a weird one. I like the I like the fact that you recognize that this is a good hand in terms of blockers to bluff with. So if we assume we're not good here, we block 10 jack, we can credibly have 10 jack. We block pocket queens and we block ace queen. We can have these hands as well for value. The problem is he folded so quickly here. 
What are we specifically trying to get to fold that bets this size? Like, ace-king just isn't folding. Kings, aces, eights just aren't folding. What's he going to bet with here that then folds? Like, genuine question. What do you think, Spice Gold? And anyone else in the chat, do you think he's going to bet this size and then fold? And don't say Queen Jack, because nobody's betting fucking Queen Jack like this. So don't don't tell me Queen Jack. So what do you think bets this size and then folds? Weak ace X. Okay. What ace X do you think he has in his range? That doesn't barrel the turn. Ace 10 and ace jack I think should barrel turn. Seeing as you're saying he's always barreling 10 jack. You know he should always be barreling ace 10 and ace jack for that for that, for that matter. So we're looking at hands like ace 5 suited. But if he has ace 5 suited maybe he can have ace 8 suited and ace 6 suited. So we're looking at specific combos. Not only that he's not giving up. He's not checking the turn with ace 5 of hearts most likely. So, you know, it looks at, we're then looking at two combos of ace-5, two combos of ace-4, maybe two combos of ace-3. I think my best bluff here, my the, the bluff that I would use here always would be 9-10 of clubs and 9-10 of spades, which we take this same line with most of the time. We're going to check back the turn a lot. And then I think 9-10 is the best hand ever because not only do we block some of the, you know, knotted hands, we're also lower down in our range. We don't block any two pairs or sets, agreed, like we do with the queen. But yeah, so I wouldn't have liked to call, but then at the same time, what are we actually, you know, trying to get to fold here? I, I don't think he has ace jacks. Jacks and tens, it doesn't matter if he's... What, what, what I'm trying to say here, Abitovic, is what is the point in jamming rather than calling? He can bluff hands like... I think if he's going to bluff here, he should bluff hands like sevens and nines because he's quite low down in our, his range, which should take this line. He could maybe even bluff tens. Agreed, but we block it. There's only three combos. So yeah, this is a really interesting one. I, I think I'm okay with the bluff. And it's good to see that you're doing it as well because you have this in your arsenal. If, if I'd have bet this river versus you here and then you jammed, from what I'd seen so far, I'd be hating life because I've not seen you get out of line like this. So I'm actually on the fence of whether I like calling or jamming or folding. I honestly think we should do a little bit of all three. Honestly, I think if, I get, if you get into a spot, just pull up a randomizer... And just, you know, fold when it's 33 or less. <laughs> Call when it's 33 to 66. And jam when it's uh, 67 plus. I think, honestly, I think that, that's what you can do. I like it though. It's good to see that you recognize that that hand can be turned into a bluff. Kings reopen. This guy's been doing a lot of three betting, so we like to see it. So we want to... I think this size makes sense here. Yeah? I think this is a... Pretty much a perfect size here. So I'd be going 19 big blinds from a theory point of view if there was no cold call. Uh, you know, I'm going to have a reasonable amount of bluffs. Maybe we go 23 here, but I think this is fine. Anywhere between 21 and 25 is going to be okay. I think this is maybe a little bit on the chunky side. Easy. Now we bet one third, just under. No, just bet one third and then jam turn. Don't need to bet this big in four bet pots. This is something newer players always just butcher. When we bet 22 and a half big blinds, if he calls, he's going to have 54 big blinds left. There is 100 big blinds in the pot. So the stack to pot ratio is 0 0.5. We can just bet so much smaller here and just attack more hands. We have a very, very strong hand. If he has, you know, a flush draw, he's getting it in regardless. If he has queen X, he's getting it in regardless. Let's try and just get those worse hands. I bet a quarter pot here. Bet one third is, is more than enough. We bet one third, it's 17 big blinds. He calls 17 big blinds, so there's 86 big blinds in the pot. Then he's got so much less, like he's got this minus 17, so he's got 60 big blinds, less than that. Bet smaller here. 17 big blinds is more than enough. I'd be betting 15 big blinds and, and jam in turn. Jam in every turn, probably, apart from the ace of clubs. Or a king, actually, the king of spades, I'm checking on. It's probably going to fold anyway. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't hate checking if he had the king of clubs, because, again, there's less bad cards. But this bet size is way too big in a four bet pot. Eights, I like it when fish use this sizing because this is way small. So we have a very easy calling position. We're actually loving life here. Kind of sucky board. I'm probably calling one, maybe even just folding versus this guy. Okay, obviously he checks. I honestly probably wouldn't bet. I think he just has kings or queens like always. There's argument to bet eights because we want some protection. But I see what you're doing. You're going for this ridiculously small size trying to protect your hand. I don't hate it. I bet you get check raised. Okay, check call. I don't really want to bluff this hand because honestly, fun players will find an excuse to call down with kings and queens anyway. Yeah, I bet he's got queens. 
This wouldn't be the worst bluff ever. But against fun players, I don't think it's going to work enough. Interesting to see that you're turning hands into a bluff because you don't think you're good. I actually don't hate his play. Um, so yeah, I don't hate his play. And that's the problem. If he's at all balanced, which he should be, he should have some ace as well. So honestly, I just don't mind just checking flop, checking turn, and maybe even just folding river. Just these A-side boards. Like, yeah, we're going to have some ace but we're going to check back a lot anyway. So I think we should just maybe play that different. Don't hate the bluff on the river, but honestly, I just don't think it's working enough of the time. If he has queens with a diamond, he might even hear you off. Seems you've got him tagged as a reg, uh, a wreck, and also he's just not going to fold ace axe and shit. So, in any case, guys, that is it for tonight. So, what do we need to work on? I need to work on having a shave. Um, spice gold. So, uh, I think you play okay. Pre-flop ranges, you seem pretty sound. It seemed like you were exploiting a little bit as well. You were raising wider and stuff, so I think that's good. Try and try and you know expand on that. Just try and keep an eye out who's on your tables. How often are you going to get three bets, stuff like that, um, when you're using your, when you're debating what to raise pre-flop. Blind on blind definitely needs some work. I think you want to be betting a bit more flops or doing some check raising. I think you're just too passive. Generally, if you're the pre-flop aggressor and you have any kind of draw, like with the 9-10 off um, on the queen 8-5, I think it was queen 8-5, just bet. If, we, if we're the raiser and we have a bit of equity, we have a nutted draw, like a jack gives us the nut, we, and we don't have showdown, we generally want to bet. The big punt was the kings without the spade. That was just, again, we have to think about what we're trying to achieve with our bet. We, are, we have pocket kings. We're trying to bet for value. Why are we betting so big? What do we want to call that's worse than pocket kings? Or what are we trying to protect from and stuff like that? So just be very wary in those big parts that you're not just, you know, betting and then getting it in because you have kings when you, like, they're never bluffing really and they just don't have any worse hands. So I'd be I'd be very careful and stuff like that. Try and think a bit more when you're when you're you know when you're betting. Even if you have to one table and you have to really think about it, it's honestly going to improve your game a lot, I think. But other than that, not too bad. I liked the. It's good to see that you recognise the queen ten suit. It could be a bluff. I do think he should be polar in that scenario. So I think maybe calling does work better than bluffing. But it's good to see that you recognise that you can have. Uh, it's not like just a a call or fold scenario that you can have some all ins as well as a bluff. So it was good to see that.